Welcome to our channel, Home Culture. I'm Anna, and this is the second video in our bedroom refresh project. If you've missed the first one, you can click right here to check it out. This video is all about wall art, which I have none of in this room. I want to make a large statement piece above the bed, add a collage above the tall dresser, and I have two ideas for the wall by the dresser in the last video. I just have to figure out which one's gonna work better. For above the bed, I want something big. I find that if your decor pieces are too small for the scale of your room, it looks cheap, no matter how much you actually spent on it. I feel that large pieces give a high-end luxe feel to a space. So I started with this size canvas, but Ralph and I decided it just wasn't big enough. So I also bought this piece. I know what you're thinking. Michael sells these in so many different sizes, even larger than this one. But I paid $14 for this and a large one at Michael's is like $80. And I really wanna figure out a way to attach canvases to make extra large wall art. Admittedly, I don't have an engineering mind and I don't always think of the practical side to my projects. So I have no clue how to attach these two together. But I have Ralph and he's really good at figuring things out. So we'll come up with something together. By together, I mean he'll do it and I'll just stand around being supportive. Anna showed me what she wanted to accomplish with the frames and then I needed to figure out how to attach the two canvases together. After examining them, I decided that simply using screws to fasten them together would be the ideal method. I started by drilling pilot holes so as not to crack the wood frame. I then placed screws on opposite sides to secure the two canvases together. This is my canvas. Of course, when you join two things together, you're gonna to get a seam. But I'm gonna learn a new skill today. I'm going to use some drywall tape and I'm going to tape the seam together. I'm gonna to use the drywall compound all over to get texture, so I thought, why not hide the seam with some tape? Now, I've never drywalled. I read a little bit how to use this. You know, there's always great YouTube videos, so. I'm gonna put all my new knowledge to use. The drywall tape has a seam on it and this seam goes flat against my seam right here or I guess it would go flat against a wall. So first I'm gonna put some drywall compound down, kind of fill up this little crack here, put my tape down and then add some more compound and hope that it turns out okay. Apologies to all of you who actually know how to tape in mud. This must have been really painful to watch. But I have to say, I really enjoy using drywall compound. It's probably because I'm using it in like an artistic sort of fun way, not as a job. And I haven't sanded it yet, which I might not even have to do. That's probably the horrible part because it gets so dusty and gross. But I just have to let this dry and then I get to play with more drywall compound all over this. The canvas is all primed. I know you probably don't normally prime canvas, but I just feel like since I'm gonna be painting it, it might make the paint stick better. I don't know, that's my reasoning. And for my patch job here, I did sand it, even though I didn't need to because I'm going to be putting drywall compound for texture all over, but I'm glad I did sand it because it made, it kind of revealed a cool pattern. So I think I would like to try that with the actual full art. I don't know, I might do it in parts because it like reveals what's underneath. It just, I don't know how to explain it, but it just looks cool. Now, I don't have a plan for the whole thing. I know that I wanna use browns, creams, some blacks, just to kind of make like a moody piece of wall art. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna have fun. I'm ready to create my base. I've painted everything a light cream, but I wanna make a border and then a backdrop for the textured part. That I'm gonna do with just some simple black acrylic paint, like craft paint.
Now for the border, I'm just using some leftover wall paint and I'm just gonna paint, get the border just all wet. I don't care if I smudge into the black cause that's kind of what I'm going to be doing anyway. I'm just gonna apply a nice coat all the way around what I kind of call the border. I'm putting it on pretty thick, thicker than the black acrylic paint. I want the border to have some depth of color, some interest. So I'm going to be using some more acrylics. And I'm just gonna dab them all the way around. And now just a used up gift card. just lightly smushing it all around. I just have to let this dry. I like how it's looking. I know it looks kind of like a hot mess, but I, th I think it's gonna turn out the way I want it to. So I just have to let it dry and then I can go to the next part. I have one last step before moving on to the drywall mud and that is to put some of this tan acrylic paint over the black that I've painted. It's a little messy, so I'm definitely gonna be using gloves. Roll up my sleeves. And what you do, it's kind of fun, you just pour the paint on in just random spots, and then smear it with your hand. I did this to tone down the black and just to give it a little bit more depth. It's time to add texture. Now, I read the back and it says if the mix is too thick that you can add water. And I thought, well, that means I could add paint. So that's what I'm going to do. I have some containers that I'm recycling, so I'm just going to add some compound inside and add some paint. I'm not too concerned about mixing it perfectly because I don't mind having like a streaky kind of natural look. So black is done. And now this one is tan. And these are all colors I've already used on the art. So it's fun time. I'm gonna start on the top with the brown. So I'm gonna do brown, black, and then the tan, and then kind of try seeing to mix them up, mix them in together. This is the result after I put the drywall compound and paint mixture on. I sanded down the first coat of the drywall compound because I love how it gives this kind of just layered textured look. Now all I'm going to be doing is just mixing up more and more layers and colors and just adding it over top and sanding and adding more layers and sanding. So this one's just a little bit lighter, it's just a wall paint that I have just to make it a little more interesting. This is finished. The last thing I did was spray a sealer over top. And the cool thing that happened when I did that was the colors underneath really popped out. So I love, I didn't expect that, but I love how that turned out. Now, before I hang it up, well actually before Ralph hangs it up, we need to build a frame for it. So I'm gonna drag Ralph outside into the cold and we're gonna do that. Anna wanted to create a decorative frame around the canvas. To start, we would need to beef up the canvas border by placing one by two wood pieces. The ends were all cut at 45 degree angles. Anna then sanded and painted the pieces Once dried, I secured the new canvas border with the help of some clamps and a brad nailer. With that finished, we next cut the pieces for the decorative frame using trim pieces we bought at Home Depot. 
Again, 45 degree cuts were placed at the ends. Anna sanded everything and painted the pieces using spray paint in her spray tent. Final assembly is once again completed using a brad nailer. It's time to hang stuff on the walls, but first I have to decide what I'm going to put in the collage that goes up there. Anna worked on several variations on how to arrange the frames. Once you both agreed on the one we liked, I worked out the measurements for centering the frames over the chest of drawers and hung the frames on the wall. I mentioned that I had two ideas for this void right here and I have to decide and I have to ask Ralph's opinion. So do I do more artwork, kind of leftovers from the collage over there, or do I do these gold starbursts? I'm sort of leaning towards the starbursts because they're different, but I don't know. So we're going to play around a little. Starbursts are perfect. Now lastly, we get to put the artwork above the bed. Waller is up and done. The room's finally getting some personality and I love it. I do, I am really happy with what we picked, how it turned out and where it's placed. Now there's one more video to follow this with just me putting out the little, little things that make this feel cozy, that really personalize the place. And that is going to be in next Friday's video. So remember, like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when that video drops. We'll see you next Friday. Oh, this is where I'm like, I don't remember what I was gonna say. I hate this part. I didn't even have a coffee yet. <laughs> really popped out. So I am, I don't know what, I don't know. The room falling, the room falling. The room's not falling. No, it's totally okay. No, we didn't break anything. No. Um, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell.